This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz across the state of Montana tonight. New information developing after 27 children were removed from a northwest Montana kids camp after multiple reports of physical abuse. Plus a big reveal from Missoula Public Transportation. New electric city buses are coming to the city. We're going to show you it's just ahead. But we begin tonight with a fire. It's only a mile away from the historic Montana ghost town of Bannock. Crews are on scene near Bannock ghost town for that lightning sparked fire. The 151 acre fire started on Tuesday after a storm rolled through that area. And as of tonight, that fire is 20% contained. About 60 personnel are fighting the fire. And tonight, crews have a containment line around the northern edge to slow the fire's progress. The biggest concern for firefighters is the chance of gusty winds adding more fuel to the fire. Right now, crews are mopping up hot spots in the interior of it. We'll need details tonight surrounding the Ranch for Kids in Rexford, Montana. It's where 27 kids were removed after the facility is accused of physical and psychological abuse and neglect of its patients. Well, tonight, a Rexford woman is speaking out against the allegations. She's saying that it comes as no surprise. The Department of Public Health and Human Services says the children were being hit, kicked, body slammed, and spit on by staff. Some of the reported excessive discipline includes a 20 mile walk with no shoes or food. The ranch has since been stripped of its license. I know that some is going to be shocked. Some is going to be surprised that it didn't happen sooner. Well, this isn't the first time the ranch for kids has had a brush with the law. Critics of the program made previous attempts to enforce licensing requirements. And tonight we are hearing from Missoula State Senator Diane Sands. She was a sponsor of a bill that allowed the state to step in amid these allegations. She thinks this will be the first of many similar organizations to fall. I think it's going to be the first one of more than one. The other programs which have said they agreed to come under the licensing requirements of the state, some of them will clean up their act uh, and have people who are qualified to run these programs and only doing programs that have been proven to be effective and not ones that are just sort of something somebody made up. Some of this will probably close their doors and that's fine. If they are not providing quality care and providing for the health and safety of these children, then they should be shut down. All right, tonight, federal prosecutors are recommending a sentencing of 15 years for a former Miles City athletic trainer accused of sexually abusing hundreds of male student athletes decades ago. 79 year old James Jensen is currently being housed at the prison in Shelby. He served as a trainer for Custer County High School from 1970 until 1998. And court documents say he developed a scheme to sexually assault hundreds of male student athletes under the guise of the promise to help build body mass and muscle. Prosecutors believe a maximum sentence of 15 years is appropriate with a three year supervised release. Police are investigating after computers and other education tools are reported missing from a Butte Elementary School. The break-in reported around 7 o'clock this morning at the school on Delaware Avenue. Well, staff came into the school and noticed those missing items. Investigators believe the break-in happened sometime overnight, but the thief and how they got in, well, that's unknown. During that uh, investigation, uh, we determined that several uh, computer items as well as laptops and um, notebooks were taken from the school. We're still trying to determine exactly what was taken and from what location they were taken from. Well, because of all the number of items taken, police suspect more than one person may have been involved in this crime. Well, tonight, Yellowstone National Park is taking steps to protect its visitors after a nine-year-old girl was thrown into the air by a charging bison. The child was treated and released to the park clinic. Still, park officials said that she wasn't seriously hurt. Since the incident, rangers who worked at Old Faithful are now patrolling walkways where that bison was present. But the other reality is that this is Yellowstone National Park and animals are wild and so they are free to move wherever they like. But I do know that park rangers will be watching that area closely given the most recent incident. And a total of 50 people were within 10 feet of the bison just before the attack. The park advises people to stay at least 75 feet away at all times. 
Uh, with the weather in Montana reaching the 90s and even triple digits this week, it's pretty hard to think about snow. Well, Glacier National Park still has plenty of that snow field. Take a look at this video shared by the National Park showing the bear right there trying over and over to regain his balance. Well, instead, he's getting winter's version of a slip and slide, but thankfully no bears were injured in this ordeal. It's pretty cute to see that. A non-native plant is popping up in areas of Montana, prompting the Montana Department of Agriculture to add another noxious and invasive weed to an already long list. Ventanata is one of the fastest spreading invasive plants in Montana, taking up 55,000 acres in 19 counties. It's also known as wiregrass. The plant is found in pastures and rangeland and other areas, and experts say the weed is capable of taking over everything. So if our desirable forage is being displaced by this new annual grass that doesn't have any forage value, that could really impact our livestock production in the state. And controlling wiregrass can cost up to $75 an acre. Ventanata is also found in Idaho, Oregon, Washington, Wyoming, and British Columbia. A new electric buses are on their way to Missoula. Today, the city is rolling out six of the new buses, and this morning, city leaders took a VIP ride around Missoula. The new buses are pretty flashy, much quieter than those old diesel bustles, buses. And then at Karis Park, the public even got a chance to take a look inside. We're really excited about it. You know, it is. It's been a long time. We've been looking at electric buses and trying to find funding for them. We found the funding. The buses are finally arriving. And it's a really exciting day for Missoula and for Mountain Line. So we have six total buses coming in uh, right now. We should expect the last one to come uh, in August. And then we'll... Uh, there's a lot of training for our maintenance staff and for our operators and for supervisors and then we'll put them on the road once we're ready to go. And it looks like they have all the bells and whistles in those new buses. Mountain Line hopes to have the new buses in service by September. Gallatin County buying a new ballot counting machine to shorten the wait for election results. Officials say they plan to buy a new high speed election tabulator. The machine digitally scans, counts and calculates all the results from all of the ballots in Gallatin County. And the county already has two similar machines, but with the county's rapid growth, they say it is time for another one. Now uh, getting our third, we have uh, enough voters in Gallatin County now to necessitate uh, a third tabulator, not only um, as a function uh, of tabulation, but also as a backup to the two that we're currently using. The tabulator will cost a little over $83,000. We are told that the taxpayers will foot the bill for it. Cyclists are raising some questions tonight about safety in the Butte area after a vehicle struck and killed a bicyclist. A 70 year old Washington man died after he was hit by the side view mirror of a passing vehicle on Highway 2. This isn't the first time it's happened, though. Cyclists say a recent tragedy also serves as a reminder to safely share the road. People have to remember that we are owners of vehicles also, for the most part. We know the rules of the road. And I believe having patience will be less likely to create patience in the future. As a motorist, respect that bicyclists are a slow moving vehicle and have the same right as a motorist would at a slower pace. And the Montana Highway Patrol is still investigating Sunday's deadly crash. The name of the victim has not yet been released. A carousel for Missoula will close for a while after some equipment ended up breaking. The bearing which powers that antique carousel, it, well, it broke. An officials say it's going to take several weeks to find or build a replacement. Visitors say they're pretty disappointed, but the carousel's operators say, you know, there's still plenty of reasons to visit the park. The gift shop is open. The, the park will be open either way. And we just finished refurbishing with Dragon Hollow. And it's, it's been expanded. A bunch of new features out there. More accessible to people with uh, uh, limited mobility. And it's worth coming on down to the park and seeing, even if we can't give you a ride on the horses. The motor and frame for this were built in 1918. They're 101 years old this year. And when we get to be that age, we're going to have a couple issues ourselves, I'm, I'm thinking. 
All right, usually things that are 100 years old sometimes do, but volunteers say they are doing everything they can to get the carousel up and running as quickly as possible. Well, they may only stand about four feet tall, but competitors in the annual Stick Horse Rodeo are some of the proudest cowboys and cowgirls around. Kids ran barrels with a stick horse, tried their hand at roping, a boot race, and even got on the back of a fake bull. Lauren Gunderson was named this year's Stick Rodeo Princess. She has some pretty good practice because her cousin is a professional barrel racer, Taylor Russell of Conrad. Uh, it's fun because the horses will some, um, you can actually tell the horses what to do and I've never really done that. And it, I think that's really cool because you're training an animal so big. You got to start somewhere with every rodeo. The competition does foster that rodeo culture by introducing kids to the events they say for more than three decades. All right, well, still to come on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, I hope you ordered this next story with a little extraterrestrial because we're taking you to space camp in just a few minutes. But first, we're checking in with Bob on how the weather is out there. Southern Montana getting another round of heavy showers and thunderstorms. Meanwhile, up in the north, we're looking at a heat wave, one that's giving us a red flag warning. We'll have more after the break. 